the, the, the spot. So 2012, it's what we are reading and disgorging now for the end of the year for the Christmas market. And here we arrive to the Blanc de Blanc section. Uh, Blanc de Blanc, we go for a short lease aging to keep the fruit flavor, not to go too much for post uh, aging lease. This is Blanc de Blanc for the 70th anniversary of the company. We made a special oh. bottle because this year it's a very big year for us. So it's a blend of 11, 12, 13 and 14, which we are... Uh, uh, making a special packet for marketing at the end of the year so to celebrate. Yeah, and here you have the, the extraction chimney for taking out the chalk. So on the top we are in the street, and now it's the air ventilation for the for the circulation of air in the cellar. So in the, in the cellar, we have around five years of stocks, 250,000 bottles are present actually in the cellar. Okay. So we do rosé. Generally, we used to do a rosé vintage. This year, we are launching a rosé non-vintage. On the other end, you have the rosé vintages. And this is the year 2014. So this would be on the market not before three to four years. The tradition of the house is the long lease aging. Okay. This is a special Blanc de Blanc for, uh, for the year 2019, for the 70th anniversary of our settling here. And backside is a new uh, blend with uh, bottle ferment, uh, barrel fermented Chardonnay. And this will be released in 2019 as a vintage for the celebration of the 90th anniversary of the press, which is still running. So it sounds like it's all celebrations. Yeah, we, we are in the good years. <laughs> yeah. We have to do marketing also. Well, this is the old Magnums, which were previously on the, before 61, no crown cap. It was the cork and a stapler, a metal yeah. stapler. And this is a 61 Magnum. 61 Magnum. Hmm? This is for family and best family friends. Family and special guest uh, tasting. Okay. Not for sale. Not to sell, except if somebody wants to spend a big amount on <laughs> Of course. So we have 53, 59, 55, I think, and 61. Interesting. So here is the crossroad on the yep. top of the hill. So yep. it is just the stop signal is here. If you turn on the left, you go 200 meters, yeah. you go to the Champagne Avenue. Yep. Another extraction chimney. And we have two sumps. One here, another there, on the other end, to collect the water when it is uh, raining in winter. So here in the past we used to have the, the Riddling Alley, where we used to have uh, 8,000 bottles, which we were uh, reading, uh, in every day. One hour, one guy was coming down in the cellar to riddle all the bottles. So now we riddle on the automatic riddling machine and uh, we keep the Riddling Alley to keep the library on, uh, on the pupitre. So it's all the old vintages which we are selling, but also which we are using to make the sugar solution at the time of this cotton. So the final touch in the wine making is a sugar solution and it is made always with the old, old vintages. Are we looking down there? Are we, are we going down yeah. there? Should we? Okay. I'll follow you. So we are keeping every year between uh, 240 to 700 uh, bottles when the year is very good. For example, uh, the year 1990 was an excellent year in Champagne, so we have kept 700 bottles to make a special release, uh, maybe in two or three years' time. We still have some 60s, 70s. 
98 is my first year as a winemaker in the winery, and it's the first year of my daughter. So she will have some 1998 as champagne uh, for her wedding ceremony if she gets married one day. So more and more bottles. <laughs> yeah, and lots of bottles. We, this way. So the, my grandfather was a violin player, so that is why the vintage is called Symphony, and the special bottle is called Harmony, and he designed the logo in 1953 with the treble cliff, the glass of champagne of J. of Giacchino. Yeah. And so the, we modernized everything in, in 2011 to have something more modern to catch the new, new market. That's your logo, isn't it? Yeah. Really? yeah. So a lot of money down here. Yeah, in Champagne, you see, you have a lot of money. The Champagne Avenue is the richest in the world. avenue of the world. Yes, in the world, yes. I agree. If you take a Moët et Chambon, they are selling around 35 to 40 millions of bottles, so four years of stocks. And they are not the only one in, in the area. So here is the uh, most humid uh, place of the, wine, of the cellar. So you see, can see some condensation on the bottles. It's because we don't have any uh, uh, extraction well on the top, and so there is a big garden, so it's, a, it's very humid here. And we used to have an old oak tree on the, on the top, but it collapsed during the hurricane of 1999, so it's not taking any more the moisture from the yeah. soil. So you can't imagine that uh, when you are upstairs, that downstairs there is so many there is. bottles. I, and here well. it's very quiet, there is, we have only one layer, and even you don't listen to the road where you have the trucks which are coming. No. Here we have the four oldest bottles from the estate, four bottles of 1949. Again, not for sale. Not for sale. Unless one, one day, one, day one Russian guy came, he, he said to me, uh, this is my uh, wedding, uh, uh, my uh, birth, birth year, I said, uh, he said, can I buy, buy one? I said, no, I will offer you one. He said, what is the condition? That you buy 1,000 bottles of champagne. So he didn't buy <laughs> 1,000 bottles of champagne, so he didn't have it. But we will do a charity auction maybe in 2019. Because all the year in, in, in nine in champagne are very good. So we have 49, 59, 69, 79, 89, 99, 2009. So maybe we will make a, a special box with all the, the six years. Well, that would be a special price, yeah. wouldn't it? That's very good, very interesting. Very interesting. And uh, the history of the cellar is that in 1917, there was a battalion of soldiers who came here in February to stay during winter because it was cold on the battlefield, which were very nearby. And the battalion was a French troops, but from Africa, North Africa and Africa, and they were called the, the Zouave because they, they were having a special uh, hat, which is called a, a fez, and so they, they scarred in the wall the, the <laughs> logo of their battalions. Yes. Brilliant. And back up. Back up, yes. How many steps were there? 106. 106 steps. One of the longest staircases of Champagne. The longest is Comrie, 116, but with smaller steps. And Comrie is, uh, Veuve is 103. So that you have a lot of humidity in the cellar. So as soon as you climb, you have the condensation of the water into your lungs. It's more difficult to climb the steps from the cellar than the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's very good exercise. Yeah.
next to it. This is the Brut. Yeah, the private QB. Private QB. It's the blend of 70% Chardonnay, 30% Pinot Noir, 80% from the harvest 2012, 20% of reserve wine. And this is uh, without chaptalization, without uh, uh, malactic fermentation. So bottle on 28th of March uh, 2013, and this is a disgorging of, uh, I think it is January, uh, it's January 2017, right. so nearly 40, it's 45 months of lisage. This is taste of, smell of pomelos. Vanilla, uh, citrus, citrus yeah. and in the mouth a very nice bubbly, tiny bubbles with uh, an explosion of flavor of, uh, of uh, brioche, red fruit and toasty notes at the end. This is the style of our champagne which is for uh, aperitif and uh, cocktails but can pair as well with uh, fish. to have only four major products in the winery uh, before uh, I became the chairman of the company. We used to have private cuvée because in the past you have to give a, an English name to your champagne because it was drunk mainly by British and Americans in Paris. And so everybody was having an English name. So even Krug was having private cuvée. So, but we patented uh, after that, and so now we, we are the only one using private cuvée as champagne. Oh, I see, I did that. And so we used to have private cuvée, symphony and harmony, because you know, my grandfather was a violin player, and we were making a symphony rosé, and so when I became, the, after the death of my father and my uncle, I have decided to introduce Blanc de Blanc and Blanc de Noir, but not on the same style, not on lonely aging, on the freshness, to catch new consumers, to catch... Uh, the new generation would like something more crispy, more fresh and more on citrus. Some champagne which are much uh, understandable by the new generation of new champagne drinker. So Blanc de Blanc is single year, single vineyard, so the year 2014, with a vineyard planted uh, 30 years ago. So we do a vineyard selection and here no chaptalization, no uh, malolactic fermentation and no filtration just to preserve the fruit flavor. And we do that since 2010, and which has been a very big success. So here we are more on the citrus character, yeah. and with the minerality which is, which is coming. Yeah. Even it has a little bit of Sauvignon character. Iodine is coming also, it's like uh, the, the peat from the whiskey from the from the UK, you have a lot of iodine coming on the, on the nose, and then in the mouth you have the citrus character yes. with a lot of minerality which is making your mouth uh, watery and asking for a, a second glass. So this is pairing well with the oysters, seafood, okay. sushi, sashimi, uh, all kind of uh, Japanese uh, and scouts, uh, carpaccio from scouts, this is excellent because of the uh, minerality and with the uh, uh, citrus character. And you said how many hectares did you say in total? Uh, 17 hectares. 17 but we hectares. Keep, keep 7 hectares for, for us. So 7 and then the other 10 go just down the road. Yeah. And we keep for us only Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, no Pinot Noir. Okay. But why? Because Chardonnay and Pinot Noir can age a long time in the cellar because of the uh, fine fine quality of the of the grape varietal and I don't like too much Pinot Meunier when it is aging because you get more on the dry apricot fruit and spirit mm. figures which is not pleasant in a champagne. Pinot Meunier is very good in a young champagne because it's bringing you some um, 
fleshy fruits char character like peach and pears, which is very nice in a young champagne. The brioche is always coming from, from the Pinot Noir. Vanilla character is coming from the Chardonnay. Here you have no barrels, and you will see that as soon as we will get in the in the vintage, that the the vanilla character will be coming Expressed. because of the vanilla of the Chardonnay with the long lease aging in the cellar. So Blanc de Noir, because of the success of the Blanc de Blanc, we did the same thing with the Blanc de Noir. So 100% Pinot Noir, single year, single vineyard, no chaptalization, no malolactic fermentation, and no filtration. So you have a tiny hint of uh, pink color. On the juice, we don't do any treatment. So this is the, we still use the press of my grandfather from 1929. And so we, we, this is the quality of the juice which is coming out of the press. We pay the pickers by the, uh, by the hours, not by the kilograms, to be sure that we have the best quality. We ask them to sort the bunches, so they remove the green berries, they remove the uh, rotten berries, to get the best fruit in the press, and so to have the best champagne. So here you, are on, uh, you have a cherry nose, a little bit of minerality, cherry nose, Strawberry, yep. even a little bit of uh, framboise, uh, rasp uh, raspberries. You cannot make a good yep. apple pie without good apples with the same. Yep. Wine making and cooking is the same thing. And we, uh, as a wine making uh, product, we use only yeast and an SO2 for wine making. And then after we use only riddling helper, really, uh, finding agent to do the reading. That's all. For me it's the fruity character yes. with a little bit of elderly uh, flower, a little bit of greenish character which is making a nice acidity. So this is very good as an aperitif champagne along with ham, parma ham with some cheese. It's, it's good with a plancha or even some, with some Spanish chorizo. You have vinosity. And it's the same year as the Blanc de Blanc. But you see that we, we also made those two champagne to be able to educate the new consumer to, to tell them what is a Blanc de Blanc, what is a, what is a Chardonnay, what is a Pinot Noir. And uh, after, if you blend this and that, and you wait for two years, you arrive to that. And also with the young generation, uh, who is accustomed to buy champagne in the supermarket. They are buying now uh, more uh, young champagne with a high acidity, which was not the style of our champagne. So we develop uh, uh, those two new products to make the champagne more uh, exciting to the young generation. And for the, for the private QA, we do it as half bottle, bottle, minimum, Jeroboam, uh, and we do it as brute nature, extra brut and demi sec. So it's the last harvest of my father. Really? Yeah, he died a, a week later after the end of the harvest. Really? He just uh, grabbed the desk to be able to do the, the last harvest. That was great. And uh, so it's very nice to release it in, in uh, 2017 for the 70th anniversary of the company. So here it's different. Uh, it's a vintage, it's 60% uh, Chardonnay, 40% Pinot Noir. It's the oldest uh, plots from the estate. Definitely. So here you have the autolysis character which, which is coming. And this is uh, typical uh, from the long lease aging in the cellar. So this has been bottled in January 2000, uh, in March 2009 and rid of in this gorge in December 2016. So that is the seven years of lease aging and uh, always we try to do the tasting here in the tasting room uh, with some champagne with more than three to five months of closest gorging time. So here you have the caramel notes which is coming. But, so here, uh, 2008 was a very, it was a late uh, harvest, end of September. So we, we did the malolactic fermentation. Nowadays we decide to make or not to make according to the taste of the grapes, the taste of the juice, the taste of the wine. And also to reduce our carbon footprint, we now we 
in turn not to do any more the malolactic fermentation. It's to be to chill the juice, chill the wine, and then to heat to make the malolactic fermentation. Because the target also is to be certified high quality environmental this year. So here you have mushrooms, you have vanilla, you have oak, you have caramel. It's a champagne for food or for special aperitif. It's a champagne to go along with foie gras, along with gougère. Uh, it's a champagne which, is, uh, which will be pairing well with some uh, chicken breast in mushroom and cream sauce or to go with a uh, fish fillet with butter and cream sauce, something like that. But still you have a good freshness and a nice minerality. Dosage, um, we are at uh, 9.6, 9.8, 9.6 and here we are 9.4 grams of sugar. And sugar solution is our own sugar solution, it's cane sugar uh, mixed into all champagne. Then we go on to 2004. I had a problem yesterday, is that I can I was not able to remove the, uh, the top, so I have to sever it. So I transfer it to one, one bottle. So here it's all. Yeah. It's here it's 80% Chardonnay and 20% uh, Pinot Noir. So here it's completely different. We make this blend only on very good year. So uh, to be able to mature the long time in the cellar. And here we are uh, on the year 2004, which was a gorgeous year, with a very high acidity. So here you have mint, you have uh, Abadian licorice. Yeah, I was going to say licorice, I can... And you have uh, chocolate and coffee. It's a champagne for special aperitif, it's a champagne for it. Winter, it's a winter champagne to be seated in, the, in front of the fireplace and still it's, it can age a very very long time. It's a champagne for connoisseur. And even this champagne is much better once it has been uh, open for a while because you have a small oxidation. This uh, we bottled in 2005. Uh, riddle in 2015, so more, no more than 10 years, and then after we store the bottle, bottle on point to stop the evolution of the, of the flavor. Less bubbles because I have to transfer it to decant it uh, yeah. from the broken bottles, but otherwise the uh, bubbles level is exactly the same. You know in, in Champagne we are at uh, around 4750 wineries, we are each making between five to seven different champagnes, say six. So around 24, 25,000 different champagnes are available in Champagne. Uh, all, all producer together, so from uh, yeah. somebody who is, because in Champagne you have all the things, you can bring your juice to cooperative, take like the juice, take like the wine, take wine, the, the bottle. Everybody has got a special uh, way of working. Okay. So it's 4,750 champagne label, approximately. Label, uh, house, house. Houses. So each and every champagne house is making six different champagnes. Mm. So you have a big... But 80%, what I'm sure is that 80% of the land belongs to the small grape growers, 20% yeah. to the yes. champagne houses, yeah. but 20% 20, 20 of the business yeah. is done by the small champagne yeah. houses and 80% by the big champagne houses. Yeah. So when everybody uh, says that uh, a champagne from a negociant is not good, that you have to be very careful, this is a big mistake. It is not the champagne from the negociant which is not good, it is the grape which is made by the great grower, which are not good. Yeah, 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 true. Yeah. <laughs> this is always the big uh, deal uh, between négociant and, and récoltant. Mm. I don't understand, yeah. A négociant, as us, is a, we are a, a great grower négociant. It's our own grapes which are in our bottle. It's because it is the status of the company which my grandfather has chosen. In 1947, he was not sure that the champagne business would be successful. So he separated his champagne business from the grape business. And so to be able to, the, the, the father and the two sons were having the land and they, he was, they were selling the land to the champagne Jacquino. So you have to be a negociant to be able to buy the, the, the grapes. 
Then after you have the grape brewer who is growing grapes, uh, giving the grapes to the big champagne houses. He can give to a cooperative and you can give to other, other people. Even a small, a small grape brewer is allowed to buy 5% of its production to another grape brewer. So rosé, we are a little bit deep in the bottle because I like to put the perfect color into the glass. That is semi? No, no, it's no. a blended rosé. But it's 50% Chardonnay, 50% Pinot Noir. And in the 50% of Pinot Noir, 30% is uh, uh, white Pinot Noir and 20% uh, is uh, red wine made out of uh, 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 Burgundy style, style red. So no crushing, no destemming. We make only on a vintage year to get the perfect maturity of the Pinot Noir, which we keep for maturing a little bit longer in the vineyard. And uh, the target is to uh, not to, ex to have a nice color, nice fruit, but no bitterness. So in the glass, you have a nice... Sometimes the Blanc de Noir in some champagne houses, it will be called the Rosé. So it's the year 2011, so it's a harvest of August. Strawberry, yeah. Strawberry, cherry, red currant, uh, marmalade. This is good as an aperitif or uh, with a fruit salad or a chocolate cake. Some people will take it along with some uh, lamb chops. You can afford meat, even powerful meat, a little bit with a uh, sweet sauce. You can have a uh, uh, lamb chops with uh, honey but for me uh, champagne is definitely as an aperitif uh, and you have the same nice bubbling character nice acidity so here 2011 characteristic is at very high sugar level no malactic ferment so no chateauisation no malactic fermentation and no filtration and the red, red wine is mature six months in, in barrel what makes Jacquinot special? What is the well, what, first is, is it, yeah. first is the blend only of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Either as Blanc de Blanc is only percent Chardonnay, one hundred percent Chardonnay. Pinot Noir is one hundred percent Pinot Noir, no Pinot Meunier. And in the Harmony, in the private cuvee, in the Symphony, no Pinot Meunier at all. I will introduce maybe in two thousand seventeen, if the quality is good, uh, a Blanc de Noir from Pinot Meunier only. And we are a boutique winery, so we go for long lease aging to be able to reach the best and the highest quality as possible. And we try with our uh, network to sell to boutique importers and resellers because we don't have the capacity to supply supermarkets, so we supply to private uh, wine shops and independent wine shops to hotel, restaurant, private customer. And as export, we try to work with the local people. When we are in Japan, we work with a Japanese girl. In Taiwan, with a Taiwan importer. In Hong Kong, Hong Kong is importer. We try to work with the lo local people.